Good day, friends of Buzzy. It occurs to me that I should have probably started counting a long time ago, but it's almost day 365 of our country becoming aware that COVID was a thing. So let's see where we are and go over some of the new information. Today, I'm going to talk about cholesterol and statins, and that actually is very relevant to an update on nasal irrigation. So here we go. One of the things that was noticed fairly early on is that high blood pressure is correlated with increased severity of COVID-19. Turns out that when you have hypertension, you have increased number of ACE2 receptors, the little receptors that are in your nasal cavities that catch on to the SARS-CoV-2 virus where it connects. This week, a paper came out that explained one of the reasons why people who are on statin drugs to lower their cholesterol are actually doing better and less likely to get severe SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus-19. So the reason that COVID-19 is less severe is hypothesized to go back to that whole concept that viral load correlates with severity of illness. And what they found was that there is a lipid layer, a fatty layer, like a cholesterol layer that is necessary when the SARS-CoV-2 virus and the ACE2 receptor join together. And so in order for the virus to be able to pump its nastiness into our cells, there has to be a lipid layer fusion. So when the two layers of oil connect, then it makes a little opening and then stuff can go through. That lipid layer seems to be decreased or blocked by statins, which makes sense because statins lower your cholesterol. It's going to lower the greasiness of what's going on. This is really interesting for a couple different reasons. First of all, it may suggest that statins are worth taking by anyone. I don't think anyone's ready to go that far. But the other thing it means is that the people who have been doing nasal irrigation with a surfactant or with a soap may be on the right track. So here is where we are with our nasal irrigation study. As many of you know, we were graciously funded by Augusta University's foundation. And Augusta University's foundation was funded by a group in Atlanta that was, um, we'll put it at the bottom of this, um, also funded by Neomed and funded by Navage, the two different makers of nasal irrigation tools. So, so far, we are at the end of our enrollment and we're beginning to look at the outcomes in patients who did nasal irrigation and controls in the population who weren't able to be enrolled or didn't enroll but are in the same group of time. What we have found is that baking soda uh, versus betadine probably doesn't make that much difference. However, in the group that did nasal irrigation, there were only two people that either went to the emergency room or were hospitalized for COVID-related complaints. I'm not counting the person that hurt their finger. Of those, one each was using a meal med and a divage. So I don't think that what you use to do nasal irrigation, so long as it's high powered, matters. But I will say that both of them were doing baking soda. So I am not 100% ready to give up on betadine being something that's important. Now, they're doing a study at Vanderbilt that is similar to ours looking at viral load after testing positive when using nasal irrigation. They're looking at baby shampoo and that might do the same kind of thing as betadine. Betadine is a povidone iodine. It's actually a viricidal. It kills viruses. It needs about a minute to be 99% effective. So with nasal irrigation, especially something as efficient as a navage, you might not find that it's in contact with your nasopharynx for a full minute. Nonetheless, that may be additive to killing the virus and not having enough viral load to get sick. It's too soon to tell, and whether it's two or zero with the, the alkalinization or the betadine, it's not a big enough number to be able to statistically significantly say that betadine is, is irrelevant. 
Um, I think that what our study is going to show is that nasal irrigation is absolutely relevant and a really good way to decrease your likelihood of going to the emergency room or being hospitalized. Whether or not betadine adds to that is going to be a little bit longer in looking at some of the results of the other studies that aren't finished with their data collection yet. But back to cholesterol. It certainly seems that the lipid layer and fusion are relevant. And our hypothesis with baking soda was to see if you change the pH, if it mattered. I don't think it does. I think that what matters most is that the solution to pollution is dilution, and we're flushing out all of the viral load that makes you sick. It's possible that adding a little extra betadine can help. So we're recommending using a half teaspoon of betadine. After looking at the results today and chugging through the data right before I got on this, I decided to go ahead and keep betadine in my regimen for now. Definitely though, nasal irrigation is something that I continue to be able to recommend with confidence, whether you just caught COVID or whether you're trying to avoid it after being exposed with a group of people who didn't have their masks on properly. That is my update for now. I would like to tell you that there is an advisory committee, the ACIP, um, the Advisory Committee on Immunization, I should know this, it's the CDC ACIP panel. They're meeting right this second to update on vaccines, when we're gonna start getting pediatric trials. So far, the five different vaccine manufacturers all say they're starting pediatric trials early in 2021. So hopefully we'll see something. I have been invited to speak for the Vaccine Advisory Committee for the Department of Health and Human Services, and I'll be giving my presentation on Thursday, February 4th at sometime between 1 and 5. I'll be talking there not about nasal irrigation, but about using buzzy and about needle fear. So please tune in then. And until that time, please send all of your COVID questions. I'm very happy to answer them. I really appreciate all of the good feedback for us having put this information out into the world. Thank you so much. And we're getting so close. It's going to be fine.